it up. Welcome. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you, and uh, welcome to the uh, um, CIP Capital Planning Meeting for the Town of Reedfield. And this is a joint meeting uh, with uh, the Select Board and uh, the uh, Budget Committee. It's uh, a, a more or less of a workshop uh, where, where we'll be looking ahead at our plans for capital investment over the next few years. Um, and of course, that directly relates to uh, the current budget. We'll start by just introducing ourselves. Um, we'll start with you, Eric, and then go through the select board, and then Andy, I'll hand it off to you. Uh, Eric Dyer, town manager. Ralph Eno, select board. Catherine Mills Woodson, select board. Chris Salmon, select board. Bruce Burgoyne, select board. And Andy, if you want to say a word or two, and then, then your group. Well, the budget committee is pleased to be here talking about the big things. You know, these, we also, Focus on the little things, but it's nice to look at the big picture now and then. Oh, stop it. Um, and my oh, compatriots are here to help. Ed Sims, no, Budget know. Committee. Rebecca Lindenberg, Budget Committee. Marty Hanish, Budget Committee. Ellen Schneider, Budget Committee. Teresa Schott, Finance Officer. <laughs> and I want to thank every single member of the Budget Committee for um, volunteering. That's a really uh, important, and at this time of year, it's a fairly um, involved job, and you do a great job. Uh, the capital meeting planning goals are, are pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to take a look and uh, have presented to us capital investments for the upcoming fiscal year uh, 21 and five years uh, beyond. Um, I'm not a big fan of necessarily locking into five-year plans or 10-year plans. I think those things are somewhat flexible, but we'll be taking a good look ahead. Um, and we're going to listen and, and hopefully answer whenever possible any budget capital related plans, questions and concerns and comments. We don't have members of the public with us uh, tonight. That's not intentional. They're just not here. Um, so we'll try to make sure that we have a robust conversation so that the kinds of questions citizens would ask do get asked. Um, we'll hear any recommended changes to the capital investment plan and take a look and discuss uh, our policy directions and objectives. Um, so without, for, unless you want to add something, I'm going to turn it over to Eric Dyer, who's going to uh, basically walk us through uh, some of the documentation that was sent out in advance, and um, we'll, we'll have some discussion. All right, thank you, Bruce. Um, uh, I'll start just by giving a quick um, summary of the packet that's in paper form here. Uh, so uh, folks can see um, what uh, what's included and what it means. Um, the first uh, several pages are the actual slides uh, from the, uh, the presentation for this evening. Um, uh, this is where we talk about the, the, the main um, items and the, um, the, the short-term outlook. Uh, this is where I hope to focus much of our attention. However, we do have other things that we can and, and will, I'm sure, discuss. Um, behind that, we have our full uh, or not our full, but a, a, um, a um, much more complete version of our capital uh, investment plan uh, spreadsheet. Uh, it does go out five years. Uh, however, there's you know, 20 years beyond that in some cases and, and more, um, depending on the, the nature of the, uh, the asset that we're talking about. Uh, but the uh, the column that we're currently working in is highlighted, and that's the, the fiscal year 2021. Uh, and these are broken down by category. Uh, with um, uh, it's not necessarily consistent with how our accounts are structured, but that's something we got to work on in the future. Uh, but uh, these are um, a fairly complete listing. These two pages of the assets that we've identified as needing um, uh, needing review and uh, consideration for future spending. Uh, beyond that, we have two pages which represent uh, both the uh, estimate for fiscal year 2021 reserve balances. And so these are reserve balances not just for capital, but for capital and other uh, departments, uh, um, other operating reserves. 
Uh, and so I just wanted to point out that um, the, the 21 sheet is in the front, the 20 sheet is in the back. Uh, FY20, uh, as you know, we're only halfway through or a little bit more than halfway through. So there are a lot of estimates and projections uh, in these numbers uh, that get us to a point where uh, we can have some reasonable, I guess, assurance that the balance at the end of uh, FY21 is should be pretty close. Um, it all depends on how much money the departments spend. Um, just a quick uh, summary uh, on this. Um, you'll notice that some of the uh, items are in red. Uh, that is uh, recommended consolidation of accounts. Uh, if you look at the prior year, uh, FY20, um, we have probably five or six more accounts than, than in the FY21. And one of the things we're striving to do is consolidate these accounts so that we have uh, fewer reserves uh, that are easier to manage, uh, and particularly um, trying to streamline things so that if we have a, an account that um, has an operating budget and a capital budget, that we have an operating reserve and a capital reserve. So uh, trying to uh, build some consistency in uh, as we move forward with that. Um, the calculations on, on how this comes together, I can get into at some point if you'd like me to. But generally, uh, some uh, the first couple columns are additive, uh, and the later columns are uh, subtracting uh, from those values. So it's um, uh, just a bit of a balancing to show, um, in many cases, what goes into an account, what comes out, uh, and what the remainder is. Uh, and the final sheet in the packet is our um, long-term uh, debt uh, by fiscal year. And I want to thank Catherine for bringing this to my attention, that this really ought to be part of our, our capital planning discussion, because uh, if we're not saving for it outright, we're probably bonding for it. Uh, so it's very important to have that information in there if we're going to have a discussion for more than, um, more than the current fiscal year. So um, that's my, my quick run through of the packet. Um, any questions on any of that before I move on to the specific uh, departments that we're looking at? Real quick, operating reserve for existing line items. Uh, why wouldn't we simply budget based on projections for a given fiscal year and hopefully be on target and not need a reserve uh, to start with? Isn't that, isn't that uh, for want of a better description, isn't that kind of piling on? You're building a reserve in an operating line item? Well, yeah, so absolutely, that's a good point. Um, certain departments uh, have more variability in them. Mm -hmm. And during our um, town meeting votes, we regularly set uh, certain departments and accounts as carry forward. Um, and very often, those uh, departments um, are, are primarily operating or might be split between operating and capital. Uh, so it's a combination of the way we've intentionally established carry forward accounts. Um, always we look at those accounts and uh, recommend their usage uh, during the, the subsequent fiscal year if it's appropriate or necessary. Um, most accounts don't have an operating carry forward. Uh, the ones that do typically uh, have for a reason, like for example uh, cemeteries uh, or uh, trails, uh, have carry forwards because a lot of the work they do is split pretty evenly between April, May, June, July, August, and September. So having that uh, does give some flexibility to them uh, as far as um, completing projects. That being said, uh, <laughs> the way things have been done doesn't mean they have to stay that way. Um, I, I, I have some reticence about mm. building reserves into operating lines because I think when you do that, it obfuscates your actual history fiscal year to fiscal year. And I noticed that when I voted on the budget last year a whole bunch of these operating lines automatically encumbered unexpended balances. And I, frankly, to be honest, have a problem with that. I think if a, if a line item is underexpended, that, that unexpended balance goes back to the undesignated fund. And we have discretion in terms of uh, expenditures over and above what an appropriated line item will be within within a certain amount that should build that cushion in without building in 
an automatic reserve and encumbrance on an operating line item when you're voting on a budget. What would you do for trails? Hmm? What would you do for trails? They can't spend their money before we, the year end. But if we have a history of July to June uh, operating expense, why can't that line reflect that, that load and the demand? Obvious. So in the winter, basically, there's, there's no expense. But come June, sure. And then what you do, you don't, we don't close the books June 30th. Uh, if there are unexpended but encumbered costs at that point for trails, when you close the books in August or September, uh, that money is still there. I don't think you need to encumber, you just, I think there's a, there's a, there's a cleaner way to do this than having a whole host of line items that are automatically encumbered without, uh, without reflecting actual experience. Well, they, they have cut them back. I, and it's not necessarily a, a function of cutting back, it's a question of, of looking at what the plan is for a budget year, when you anticipate the expenses to be incurred, and yeah, sure, if you're doing it in June, and and you uh, and those and those bills won't be presented until August or September. A budget note says, "Please, you know, here's here's my anticipated overage, which is actually represented in the previous year's budget. We would like to encumber those funds, and you do it on a needs basis versus a projected basis where you don't have experience." Any just, other comments just a or thought. thoughts? I mean, this is clean, it works, it passes muster with the auditors, but you have a whole host of line items that are automatically encumbered when you vote on your budget. And there's no indication at that point in time when you vote that those monies will actually be needed. And if they're not, they should go back to the undesignated fund balance, to my way of thinking. So. Um can I, I, can I comment? On please that? do. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, my understanding of that column that says use of carryover to reduce budget is that that heading is is sort of uh, uh, a consolidation of two things. First, technically, the unexpended balances do go back to the general to the fund the balance, general, the general fund balance, and then when the select board and ultimately uh, the residents approve the budget, they're, they're really approving two things. A, it goes back to, uh, to unencumbered, and B, it gets appropriated to an operating account. So it, I think it, it's, it's sort of shorthand, but I think in, in real, it, technically it's really doing, the, doing it the way that, that you would like to see it. I think it's doing it that way, although this is sort of shorthand for that. I, I agree with Marty. I mean, we do go through each of these lines mm -hmm. and we'll say, yeah. well, they never spent the money last year. Why do they need it this year? Mm -hmm. Or next year, whatever year it is. Mm -hmm. um, and so that <coughs> discussion occurs and Eric doesn't always end up. <laughs> With what he proposes, mm -hmm. you don't. Sure, you know. so, that's because you're also, doing your job. There was something you said <clears throat> in one of your remarks that made me think you want us to switch to accrual, and which is not how we account no, for no, no, expenses. No, you, okay, you, I thought you said, well, if we know we're going to <clears throat> incur it in August. I just, I, I, I just mean, think that. What I mean by specific lines, for example, trails. Uh, the expenses incurred in June. The invoice isn't coming until August. Uh, that's when I think uh, an approval for an encumbrance into the next fiscal year, that's when you should do your carry forward. And um, so, so to, to the point of, of how we approach this, um, I mean, we, we do have the current recommendations. The, the select board ultimately has the authority to decide what goes on the warrant and what, what is put forward as a carry forward account. So I think that that's a good discussion 
um, to have here, I think, to at least start it. Um, but with specific lines, when we have that warrant discussion, we will see every, every one that is set either as a capital or an operating carry forward. Um, and so we can have that discussion as well um, in just determining w w what we decide to carry forward and what not. Um, we've been going on past yeah. practice. So We're it's, way too um, far down the road in the development process to make a wholesale change at this point. Mm -hmm. But I would respectfully request mm -hmm. that maybe we begin to look at the process in terms of encumbrances and automatic carry forwards in terms of budget transparency. Well, I, uh, I've certainly taken a note of this. I think we probably should get on to the categories now. I, I've and, taken up um, way too much time on it. No, that's uh, out of not, that piece. Uh, Can I interrupt for a yes, quick moment? Yes, please do. Could you give us the internet password, please, Eric? <laughs> so so um, the, oh, the internet uh, is unfortunately down. I did talk to the IT. Okay. Uh, and they said they there. were going to fix it before the meeting, and they did not. So um, I uh, apologize good. for that. Um, the internet went down yesterday, and then um, it never came back. It never came. Well, I mean, it, it came back, but there was an issue with the router, um, and then the router got the conservation land tweaked by the uh, the IT was trying to fix something, and they it's broke something else. Uh, okay. We'll move on to cemeteries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. let's, let's bury that topic, which yes, is quite let's, appropriate. Let's do it. Um, so. Um, uh, we do have annual savings for capital, uh, and it's been ongoing in this um, uh, in the cemeteries for several years now. We typically do put aside five thousand dollars. I want to point out also that this year, um, this does not necessarily affect the capital reserves, um, uh, but it can affect um, uh, our uh, perpetual care funds. That there is five thousand dollars being used um, to offset. Uh, actually, I think it's a, um, is it operating cost this time, Andy? Is it's that right? um, stone repair. Stone repair. Which we feel, felt made sense for perpetual care. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, so um, that, that certainly would meet the criteria of a capital expense being $5,000 and having a, a long lifespan. Um, we hope. We hope, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, long term, we don't have anything uh, immediate. Uh, we do have some, um, I guess, Mid-term would be the five-year horizon. Uh, longer term, we have some unknown expenses that um, uh, we don't know when they're going to come up. Uh, we do know that we need to save uh, for them. Um, $130,000 is the estimate for um, the wall repair at Reedfield Corner and Case Cemetery, uh, and $7,500 for uh, an access road um, at the uh, Reedfield um, East Reedfield Cemetery, which is the one by the Jesse Lee Church. Um, so those are the two uh, items that I see in the five-year horizon. Uh, and I wanted to just, I think with each of these categories, I will ask if there's anything else that you feel should be addressed in the next five years or in the current fiscal year that we haven't looked at. I do have a question about the, um, the Reedfield Con Connor Cemetery, the granite wall, um, which is kind of one of the faces of town, if you will because it's, it's, it's a huge um, item. Um, was that, a, did we have an engineer look at that? Uh, or informally, uh, we did? yes, yes. Yeah, about five or six years ago, and we've been doing what we hope are long-term, short-term fixes, yeah. trying to get the water away from the front of it, mm -hmm. which is part of the problem. And also, we have kind of a systematic, slow-moving re repointing project going on to stabilize it. And you we hope never have to replace you chair, it. You chair the cemetery. Yes, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm there too. So. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, I just... What does case need? Um, its whole front wall is dicey. Um, it's not as bad as Reedfield yeah. Corner. So but it's, get, it's but getting it, 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 it. You get the wrong kind of freeze thaw, it could all tip over. That's what the engineer told us anyway. Probably true. And uh, I, I will say that from, from what I've seen with the work that we've done on the drainage in front of the Reedfield uh, Corner Cemetery, that has had a drastic impact in reducing the amount of standing water that we have. Um, and, and so I think that, that those little things uh, that are low cost have and will continue to pay off in, in stabilizing that, uh, that wall. All right, anything else on cemeteries? I'm good. The library. Um, 
The new roof uh, for the library should be complete by June. Uh, we did have a pre-construction meeting uh, for the, um, uh, the joint uh, fire station library project. Uh, they do want to get that roof done sooner rather than later. A lot of that has to do with the weather. Uh, they want to make sure that um, they get it done before the thunderstorms roll through. Uh, take away some of that unpredictability. Uh, that's great because it'll fit neatly into this fiscal year. The fire station project uh, will not. Uh, it's going to extend, uh, split the two years, um, and we're going to um, you know, need to uh, address that uh, with our auditors and, and also just functionally. Um, cash flow, we're fine, but we'll talk about that later. Um, uh, so th that project is going to be um, um, uh, completed, but we also have in FY21, uh, a secondary appropriation, uh, $25,000 for uh, contingency funds uh, in the event that, that something does happen at the, the library that um, the, the roof um, may need to be lifted up a little bit or if there's not another issue they discover when they're opening up the building. Um, also to address um, um, egress and um, interior work for the building. About half of what we had originally discussed uh, has been partially completed um, or has been completed w through the use of grant funds. Uh, we originally had uh, intended to have heat pumps as part of this process. Um, the library felt that that was a priority for them, so rather than hold on to the grant, fund, grant funds for another purpose, uh, they expended $20,000 uh, roughly, maybe a little bit less, uh, 15 probably, uh, to install two heat pumps in the building uh, this spring uh, prior to the, the summer season. So um, they actually kind of took, took, took that and moved that piece forward. Um, uh, but uh, we still have work to do and we still have some unknowns. So we did feel it appropriate to put that $25,000 into, um, into the FY21 budget. Um, the five-year horizon, we do also have a, an annual um, uh, reserve being put forward. Uh, it is an old building. I think we might be able to reduce that to a couple thousand dollars. Uh, I'd like to see where we are after we uh, expend the 25 that we're going to be uh, putting into it, or potentially up to 25 that we're putting into it this year, um, uh, and, and see where that leaves us with um, uh, needs in the future. Uh, so that reserve, I think, is appropriate, but the, the level might need adjustment. Um, and then unknown, um, the, the library parking lot paving, I think 10,000 is probably low. Uh, it, it's probably going to be closer to 15 or 20,000 uh, at least. Um, so that number could use an adjustment. Uh, but honestly, I think the gravel lot we have works pretty, pretty well. Uh, it drains very well. It has a good hard surface most of the year. Um, so if it's not broken, I'd say uh, we can get away with, with not paving it until... Uh, when was that item added? Or has that been... It's been there for quite a while. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I had a resident approach me on this, and it was the first time in five years. And, well, actually yep. eight if you include my <laughs> library board of trustees <laughs> term. So, so you're I, asking what? what were they, they wanted approached to me about why don't we pave that. And... Um, I, I do see a little bit of an issue. Um, I actually think the gravel approach is probably the best. But I do see a little bit of an issue with perhaps in the long run uh, with maybe paving a stripe up um, for handicap access parking and, and entry or something of that nature. But um, I, I don't really want to see that parking lot paved, I don't think. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, I think that uh, it's, it's a very well-functioning gravel lot. Um, yep. so, uh, but the idea of, of uh, handicapped parking, um, I don't recall if there's a sign there or not, but if there's not, we should uh, be putting in. So I'm going to make a note to check that. Uh, and if we don't, we can certainly... And, and that might be something where we do some sort of hard pack um, you know, table or whatever. Yeah, and, uh, we uh, could always touch up that, uh, that area a bit more with some gravel and do some plate compaction and make right. it a, a harder surface or even stone dust. There's, there's lots of uh, uh, options, but I will make a note to look at uh, handicapped spaces at the library. I have a question on that just while you're writing your note. We f did finally enter in a written agreement with our abutter on the use of the driveway. Is that correct? Uh, not to my knowledge. Does anybody That's why the fence remember? is there. Because our, our entrance actually goes, which way does it go? It goes this way? It goes this way. When you come in off the road, it's not a driveway. We only have a, an angled part. And so the abutter has given us permission to swing that out so we can actually drive in. And I, before we pave, we need to get something 
firm on that note. Yeah. <laughs> because pavement makes a whole different um, ball game than gravel. So is it an easement or a, was it just a, a letter a of right of way to the library? I, don't, is I suspect? think it may have just been a letter of agreement. Um, well, I don't recall this at all. It's probably from my older days. I, I, the thing I recall <laughs> I, was the access behind So that Teresa building. can remember, but. <laughs> Um, but anyway, that's well, just you something we need find it, <laughs> to look into. Um, it is with the current owner, though, of the abutting property. So it's been in the last... Kathy Bruce. Yeah, uh, yeah 10 okay. years-ish. Yeah. Yeah. And where is the septic system in regard to that right-of-way? There street. isn't one there. It's across the street. It's across the street. Yeah, the, 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 the shared, there's an effluent... I'm talking about the shared, the line that goes... Yeah. Uh, um, is that... I, I Something would give us some leverage. Don't know. I mean, certainly uh, there, we've we've got plenty of leverage on the effluent yeah, stuff, okay. but um, right. just, uh, just it, wondering it, if you take away the access, they get problems. But um, I I will look into uh, any type of agreements that we have um, on that. Um, I'd like to actually make it formal if we can. Uh, try to get it to be an actual Absolutely. easement. If it's not just a, if it's just a letter, I think we should go go for the next step. But I just um, thought if we could put a note with that, so if we ever do decide to yeah. do something more, we're aware of that we issue. Because the property is for sale. Yeah, it's right? for sale. So. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been for sale for. Well, I know it's been for years. sale forever. <laughs> but if you Until could take that coming. wedge and make it part mm. of the library property yes. when a sale takes place. That's right. It's better to get it taken care right. of. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good Just thinking. Yeah. Well, um, we, we have to talk about the, the, the septic uh, right. as well. So um, I will talk with her about that at the same time, and uh, we'll see if we can have a good conversation about how to square all that away. Great. Thank um, you. Question on library? Uh, I agree with Bruce about trying to keep that parking surface gravel or stone dust. Environmentally, it's much better to go that way. And when you pave things, you create drainage issues and slopes that, uh, and the abutting properties are very close and you're not necessarily sure what's gonna happen in that regard. And you certainly wanna keep it away from the old foundation of that building. The, uh, the budgeted contingency number, 25,000, I just want to make sure that's, that's not project contingency. This is library contingency for completion of the uh, second floor egress, or is this part of the project number? This is part of the project number. Okay. That's a very good right. observation. Um, th this is the breakout that I thought would be yeah. understandable. Right. and So this is how we're folding in that additional number we need to get a comfort zone for the project. The full $75,000, okay. yes, that Thank we're you. looking at for the but, overall capital. Um, but if it is not used for contingencies, for contingency, then it will be used to finish off the work of the library. Yes. That's, that's what okay. the plan Absolutely. is. Absolutely, right. yep. Okay. Yep. So because I've been the big advocate for let's do the project right and finish it. That sounds familiar. Yeah. So, <coughs> and, and since yeah, we're all that so really Part on that. Since we're on that $75,000, we did set it up so that it is a building reserve, a municipal <coughs> building reserve or contingency, however you want to look at it, um, so that it can be used interchangeably between those two buildings and perhaps others if we mm -hmm. need. Um, but the idea was that we wanted to set it up so that it had some flexibility um, and, uh, and we could. Uh, but the, the library is actually the most risky part of this whole project because of the unknowns on the, <laughs> the timbers and the roof. So um, yeah, uh, we might need a little bit more than that $25,000, so, but this is just the budget yeah. number. So if the, yeah. if the fire company is successful, and the library chips in with a little bit of fundraising on its own. Mm -hmm. uh, this may become moot. Um, or I mean, I think or the pot will just be enlarged, and there will be discretionary money that we can decide on in terms of, of in terms of the options that were in the building yeah. plan. I think we can pretty quickly spend $25,000 at the library for interior work <laughs> yeah, and the, you can. the egress is probably gonna be 10 or 15 anyway. Okay. Um, you know, so it's um, right. to get a, a steel um, mm -hmm. uh, And we can't use steps. the upstairs until we get that egress. Right. Not for anything public. Well, the yeah. underlying all this is when we got the bids, they came in right at our max yep. in terms of handling and so our room for contingency under the under the plan that was approved by voters was so tight that we're really actually 
asking for some additional contingency mm -hmm. to finish that project. So in the, in the interest of explaining that to citizens, that's really, Very it relates to the project. Yeah. And, uh, and we've split it 25 to the library and 50 to the fire station, or 75 in whole uh, to use to make sure we complete that project uh, in the manner that we anticipated. The bids came in and um, the market, uh, if you will, for construction was um, extremely um, st extremely good for contractors. <laughs> so um, yeah. they took the opportunity to, um, I, I guess it's called an opportunity bid, actually, an opportunity cash bid or whatever. Uh, so that's really what that's for, is it lines up with the project. It's not to have extra play money. Thank you. That, that's a great clarification. Eric, is this a good time for me to ask you about the five-year plan in that particular? Anyway, I'll uh, just absolutely, ask. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if you folks all look on the five-year planning horizon spreadsheet towards the back, um, we have the library building reserve has 100000 for 2020, but then we have a line, one, two, three, four, down that says library building roof, and it has nothing. And I think the 100000 should go on the roof line, not on the building line, because we're spending it on the roof. And we should revise the estimated cost from 30000 to 100000 because it more accurately reflects what we've done. Uh, I agree with that in part. Uh, okay. I think that it should be moved. Uh, however, the $100,000 is for the full replacement of all the timbers uh, and the sheathing and uh, some insulation. So the actual roof repair, um, replacing that standing seam uh, metal roof would likely be a, you know, a third or half the cost of that full project cost that we realized with this project. So uh, I think you're absolutely right about moving that down into the, um, into the building line. Uh, for future expenses, I, I think you're right that we should um, um, look at that as well, but I would, I would think, um, and I don't know if 100 years is right for a metal roof, I certainly hope so. Um, for a standing <laughs> seam anyway. Years, is what you just said? Yeah. yeah. No. For a standing seam, <coughs> no. too long. Fifty? Right? <laughs> Better be more than fifty. I mean, you can you can get asphalt shingles that'll do that these days. Oh, I wish they were on my house. Um, so anyway, would we be okay with doing fifty and fifty, Eric? I think fifty sounds good. Yeah. So I'll, I'll uh, amend that um, and drop it down fifty thousand down into the roof and amend the um, um, yeah. And we probably ought to look into revising the roof number at some point. It doesn't have to be tonight, but the year replacement. Yeah. Mm. Yep, um, and then my other well. question was similar to that, and I, I'm, I won't take long here, but um, I looked up the lifespan of heat pumps, and I have heat pumps at my house, and so I know when I think I need to replace them, and you have a 20-year life. Mm. Um, I think 15 is much more reasonable if we keep them maintained. I think we're going to be really surprised if we don't put in a shorter time frame. Yeah, um, I will adjust that to 15. The industry standard says 10 to 30 years, with 15 being what you could call your average. So I think 15 is safer than 20. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to budget, I want to try and do it yep. using the best knowledge. So I'm done. Thank Agreed. you. Agreed. Thank you. I'll make that change. Did they buy an extended service with that? I bought extended service next to nothing. Ten years. I don't believe so. I think it was just the installation and the purchase of the equipment. Um, but we can check on that. What I found is it's um, every three years is your maintenance. And if you sent in your warranty info, it's a really good warranty. We've already had one replaced under warranty, so. Are we ready to move on to administration? I also want to make an observation. Oh, go ahead. Please. I was just going to say, I'm not hearing much from this side of the table. <laughs> Except next here. This relates to the fire station, too. I thought that there are problems with the septic. I didn't think there were. When we talked about the project last year, and, and there are. And I don't know, because I've missed a couple meetings, what the issue is there. Are we replacing the septic? Because if we are, then the year changes here. That yes, was we, another one of mine that I noticed. Yeah, we are, we are going to be replace that, full replacement. Mm -hmm. And so doesn't the year change here? It, it absolutely should. Okay. Yeah. And it's full hardened replacement, right? Hardened, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it's uh, Which means you can drive a heavy vehicle yep. on we top of it. We can put a fire truck over the top of the new yeah. septic system. Because it was only 
It was only like a 10% increase in cost to be able to drive over it or not drive over it. And since it's a fairly small lot, we figured better safe than sorry. So that's what we put in the bid and that's what we're getting. Um, great. Yes. And so should some of the 710 be reflected in, I don't know, anyway. Yeah, I've got to, I'll, I'll, re I'll revise that. And actually, the, the septic costs um, uh, was around, um, we did just, I actually just worked with the engineer to break that out because it was included with their site uh, work quote. Uh, we were between fifty and $55,000 for the septic uh, all in. Um, and we should be able to be reimbursed for about um, um, a half of that by other parties. Um, so, um, yes. Just, just to take the temperature of the, the meeting here, uh, we've used 30 minutes on the first item. <laughs> we have six okay. more to go. Are you happy with that rate? No. no. Okay, so do you want me to have a little heavier gavel? Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's go on to administration. All right, thank you, Bruce. Um, uh, for the FY21 fiscal year, we um, do have a $10,000 expense for accessibility improvements uh, planned. Uh, and I will just make a brief summar summary on this accessibility uh, schedule that we have. Uh, we had initially tried to put the uh, parking lot improvements uh, out to bid, and that uh, was another one that got thrown right back in our face with prices coming in about double what they should have. Um, so we decided to, to go a different route, and we're working now uh, on the doors uh, and access for the building um, because uh, automatic openers uh, are likely a better uh, improvement uh, than a, a slight grade change when it comes to access. So, uh, but the important thing is that we have a three-year plan to make all of this happen. Uh, we'll be spending $12,000 this year, 12 to 15 depending, uh, on um, making the two front doors and both of the um, uh, main access doors to the first and second floor uh, uh, ADA accessible with a push button. Um, uh, next year, we will be doing uh, finishing um, ADA access improvements to the bathrooms. Uh, the downstairs bathroom now is compliant other than the openers. Um, uh, and the upstairs, we're going to have to do some remodeling to make that ADA compliant. Uh, but that, um, that's where we have um, this $10,000 basically to work on that second phase of door openers uh, and the, really the bathroom accessibility. So uh, we're working kind of from the outside in. Uh, making the building more accessible. Uh, and then uh, if in um, future years, we see the accessibility improvements, another um, uh, $10,000 for uh, improvements and um, the uh, parking lot. Um, and I, I broke that up just because uh, I, I think that um, uh, we may need some additional improvements in the building, but I, I do believe that we can accomplish the uh, parking lot um, uh, great adjustments in paving uh, for that $25,000 and perhaps dipping into the, the, the 10 that we have for accessibility. But they are related uh, because we do need grade changes on the front of the building. So really we have about $35,000 for that front portion of the building. Those bids that came in very high were in the thirty uh, five dollars to $45,000 range. So um, my hope is that this three-year plan allows us to make the um, uh, town office uh, fully ADA compliant from parking lot into um, uh, every every accessible portion of the building, uh, except for the stage. But that's are, are the um, looking at the five year horizon. Mm -hmm. are, are the windows for energy efficiency? Ask Teresa about that one. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a draft. Uh, it is for energy efficiency, and um, they're, they're nearing the end of their life. They're vinyl. Um, but they're not very good vinyl, uh, and there's also some rigid plastic in there as well. Uh, they are uh, pretty well spent, um, so we do need to replace those. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, uh, also, in FY21, we have a $10,000 just general building reserve because, again, we have an old building. Uh, and I'm trying to build up um, a bit of a buffer because we have been on fairly thin, uh, thin reserves, and especially with using a lot of our current reserve for accessibility, I wanted to build back up uh, some of those funds for other purposes. Any Question. questions on uh, windows? Uh, it's a long way out. You're going to be cold for a long time. Uh, and fifty thousand dollars, given the scope and what I know, windows cost. 
that's not going to pay for it. So what I'm wondering is whether or not we retailer the capital expense plan to incrementally replace over a period of time so it doesn't land on you as like a $100,000 line item. These are big, non-conforming windows. They're going to be custom made. So wouldn't it be better if we picked the problem ones that are causing the most difficulty as far as staff is concerned and deal with them over the next couple of years and then incrementally do a room at a time and cut the cost down and spread it out that way and get a better outcome and more fuel efficiency while you're doing it. I think there's some, I think it's a good idea. I like the idea of making the staff more comfortable. It's different up here. I mean, it's going to help the whole building, but if you have people who are working in a room where you have draft, that's not good. And little foot warmers that are turning the, the CMP wheel outside like at 90 million RPMs a minute, we're not affecting good good cost management. I, mean, I will say it's not it's not terrible, but it could use improvement. But it could be better. It could be better. Yeah. But let's just let's just look at doing them over what what the difference is. Staggered replacement. Yeah. Yes. I'll, I'll yeah. look at a staggered replacement schedule yeah. and I will um, reflect that in the plan. So we'll and, just um, stick that alternative in our thoughts. Yeah. Yes. I, I think an alternative approach that could be considered is to first get quotes on doing the entire job because mm -hmm. that may turn out to be less per window than doing them individually. Might be. And to uh, think of bonding it so, so that you're spreading out the impact on the taxes over several years and getting it all done at once if the numbers point in that direction. And another, another reason for looking at it, <clears throat> looking at it that way, uh, give an example from the Conservation Commission. Uh, we, did, we did not do a wood harvesting this year because for whatever reason, the quotes came in very unfavorably. And we would not be getting the revenue from that that we usually do. So we're holding off of that. We're going to try again in 21. Uh, by looking at it as you know, the cons giving consideration to doing the whole job on the windows at one time, you can test the market. And if this, if in 2021 or 2122, uh, the economy is such that contractors are looking for work and are willing to give better pricing. Uh, you may be able to take advantage of that. You know, rather than doing one window in 21, you may be doing all the windows if the pricing is right. So just a, an alternative approach to think about. Thank you, Marty. Yeah. Let's move on to recreation parks and activities. Okay, uh, so fiscal year um, 2021, we have no uh, capital expenditures. Uh, for uh, recreation parks and activities during this upcoming fiscal year. Um, significant ma maintenance on picnic structures and storage buildings, um, but no capital level work. Um, and that is to say that we are um, uh, spending three to four thousand dollars in a couple of different areas, three thousand dollars on the ball field, four thousand dollars on uh, work at the beach. Uh, that just doesn't rise to the level of what we consider a capital expense, so we're not talking about it tonight. It's included in the operating budget. Um, on the five-year horizon, we do have um, some things that we would very much like to see uh, brought in to the beach uh, particularly. Um, and I will say that these are uh, right now very much wish uh, list items because with the um, expenditures that we expect to see uh, to offset the operating costs this fiscal year, the FY21, uh, that reserve will effectively be brought down to, to next to nothing. Um, and that is the result of, of several years of insufficient revenues uh, to offset the cost of running that um, operation and the fact that it is entirely funded by permit fees, which have been the same since 1984, I believe. Uh, so we're looking, and the, the select board has directed us to look actively at how to correct that problem. Um, the, the, the two solutions. One is to double the, the permit fee, which is what, if you looked at inflation, it, it's almost exactly, it'd be like 85 bucks for a family. Um, we're starting off by increasing that to $60 this year to test the waters. 
we've got a feeling that we might not get the same number of residents participating at that higher rate, um, which could further create a bit of a crisis for this um, operation. Right now, we're just having enough money coming in to, to, to cover operating expenses, not even address capital or future plans or playgrounds or things like picnic shelters or new storage buildings and things like that. The other option uh, that we do have and that we're looking at quite actively is the possibility of turning this back over to a partially tax-funded enterprise um, uh, whereby we have programming that brings in revenue that helps offset the cost, uh, but the beach itself uh, could potentially be free to residents uh, and they would uh, maybe pay for extra services like the kayak racks or pay for Tai Chi on Saturday mornings and that would help offset the cost. So um, there's um, a couple of things in works and in discussion. I'll let the board talk about more of that if they choose. But uh, I will say that as far as capital reserves go, we're getting very much towards the end of what we can do with that, um, with that uh, beach without taking some drastic and different directions. Uh, as far as the rest of the um, recreation department goes, they do very well. Um, they regularly have more revenue coming in than, than they uh, expend, uh, and so they have a healthy capital reserve of close to $20,000, um, I think by the end of um, FY21. Um, so they're doing pretty well, uh, and we do have some storage needs, but um, they're well uh, within the range of, um, of what we would uh, have available on hand to cover them. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that to Ralph's point about um, spending what you um, uh, spending down those reserves, uh, I think in future years we're going to have to look at actually pulling money out of those funds to just reduce the tax burden um, or reduce the cost of um, you know reduce the operating budget. So, any questions, comments on recreation? I do, but I'll let someone else go first. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, so we've been talking about this, and I would be interested in hearing what you folks from the Budget Committee have as input in terms of if we take this on as a, a tax-funded rather than a user fee-funded operation, um, how you might see that affecting the budget, in ter especially in terms of capital. Um, and Eric mentioned that we could have some programming that would bring in revenue, but I'm going to assume that if we're going to have a Tai Chi program, we're going to have a Tai Chi instructor, so we're going to have to pay them, so I don't know how much the revenue is really going to <laughs> offset. dollar in, dollar out. I'm thinking it's probably closer to that, um, but part of the discussion that we've been having is that maybe we should look at the beach more like we look at the trails. We don't charge people to go on the trails. Um, there's something that add to the value of the town that cause people to want to live here or to move here. And is the beach another commodity like that? And we should be treating it that way. And if we want people to use it and it's dumpy, are they going to use it? If we improve the beach, like we've improved the trails over time, with a lot of volunteer labor, I might add, and time and equipment, and we might be able to do something similar like that at the yeah. beach so it's not outrageously expensive. Um, you know, but is that something that you folks can see a way dealing with budget-wise? Or do you see the budget as being so tight that there's no room? I'm done. <laughs> well, first of all, I can't remember how much, the, what, how many dollars the, this, the beach itself contributes in terms of operating costs. But I absolutely <laughs> think it's, a, it's an asset, it's a town asset. It, it does enhance the value of the town, and if you incorporate it into the tax base, it's much more progressive. Um, you're not leaving families who, of limited <laughs> means, having to come ask for, you know, present themselves and ask for a, pass. You know, a reduced pass. Um, so I would be all for that. And I do think you could have a beach committee. Like, yeah. Um, that's what I was just thinking. If you have a trail. We're committee. working on that too. <laughs> and and well, we have no, a beach committee, but more of a beach working committee. That's what I mean. And they, the might not, they might be people like me who wouldn't use the beach, but would love to work on the beach and mm -hmm. do the outside kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah, I don't know in terms of erosion control what the beach needs, because that's a major capital investment, I know. Um, 
and it's not here, so maybe it's not an issue, but it could be a major issue at some point. Yeah, um, uh, erosion control is actually uh, in, not in a bad place. A, a good portion of that has been hardened through a DEP um, approved project several years ago, and we've been um, actively um, allowing to grow up the front section right near the, the water and planting yeah. more uh, root, rooty uh, species, uh, low growth sumac and things like that. So we've been trying to work on that erosion piece pretty actively. Yeah. And the beach does not pay for itself right now. They're dipping into their... They, they've been dipping into the reserve for the past <laughs> three or four years, uh, but the, the one of the main contributors is the, the need for repairs and the, the uh, rent rise in the uh, cost of, um, of labor. Um, you know, minimum wage has gone up 30% or more, I think, in the past three years. I don't remember the exact math on it, but it's, uh, it's, it's been impactful. So, uh, Dennis isn't here tonight. Um, <laughs> but he's a and proponent. <laughs> either he or I are, I don't know which of us is pushing this the hardest in terms of, um, I mean, I think it's a town gem and we should absolutely uh, support it. I also think that if we had an erosion capital intensive situation come up, we'd be stuck with it anyhow. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 it's our, true, but it's, you asked about right, it's, right. it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. property that we own in town. We had a, a, um, a, a realtor here talking the other night about a completely different issue, and he mentioned how he makes sure that when he has clients in his car, he drives right by that beach. Uh, he's probably not telling them that it's a fee based and all that, uh, but it's, it's a gem. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I actually grew up in a town with a lot of beaches, and I think it's a great thing and an, and an asset to the community that we should um, fold into our operating budget. So we were, go ahead. Well, to your point about what that particular realtor individual had to say, mm -hmm. uh, driving by the beach, uh, I did have a brief conversation with Eric week or two ago saying, if we need to capitalize some improvements, why wouldn't we uh, avail some private enterprises uh, the opportunity to support that with some level of name recognition, which, uh, which might be to their benefit and offset the cost of the taxpayers if we choose to, uh, to not charge membership passes and what have you and just let fees offset to some extent and I personally don't have any problem with with asking people who think that it's a time benefit and 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 make a living on on the uh, the quality of life in this town asking them to uh, make a tax deductible donation because we're a municipality it's a tax exempt donation we have infrastructure we want to build down there uh, it should be part of our capital plan. Yeah. Well, I think I, I agree completely. Um, we, we have $50,000 coming from the fire department to offset about 10% of the cost of their building, or maybe five. Um, but it's still, it, it adds up, and uh, absolutely, that's a good uh, approach. Yeah. You can have a sponsor board. Mm -hmm. So we, what we've talked about, and I hope it's still moving forward, is that we want to put a test question, a feeler question out on this year's warrant, asking people kind of a straw poll thing, you know, yeah. about changing the beach over to being what we've talked about. I don't know how to phrase it correctly. Yeah. So that then we would be able to go ahead and start budgeting for things next year, because right now the structure doesn't really allow us to do that. And so that's why we're feeling a lot of consternation. We can't just say, okay, we're going to raise the money and do these projects. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, the, the article I have drafted is actually more, uh, it's less of a straw poll and more of a, do you um, support um, making the public, the, the beach a publicly accessible property? Or it's something like that. The language Perfect. really is uh, much more of an authorization to make that change, allowing us next year to f uh, fund it through um, uh, you know, more diverse means. And I yeah. suspect, I mean, the goal that you all set out for us was to hold assessments. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Or, <laughs> uh, the tax assessment. Every year. Flat. So, but this, I mean, the, the, you the, can tell me if I'm wrong. I don't think it would, I don't think it's material. 
that. I would agree with that in, in large part. That's your budget. Uh, it's not a huge number. It's about $10,000 without <clears throat> accounting for capital. Um, if we accounted for proper capital reserves and expenditures, it'd probably be in the order of 15000 a year, um, maybe a little bit more. Um, so certainly... Well, it's the same order of magnitude as the cemeteries, basically. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and if we done in, got fun. any funding, you know, town mm -hmm. funding, and we do kind of charge for the cemeteries. Yes. Because you buy, you buy a plot. It's just a one way in. Now. Yeah. Right. Right. Otherwise, but I mean, you're going to leave you on the side but of the road for the only buy it once. But it's okay to have some sort of a funding mechanism yeah. associated with yeah, these sure. things. Um, sure. So, I, I, one of the reasons I'm bringing it up is when we have our public hearing in about a month, we're also going to be talking about the warrant articles. Mm -hmm. And that will be one of them. So, I wanted you guys to have a heads up on that. and. Yeah we may have questions about, well, how are you going to pay for it? And so I think you've just had a little small discussion about that. Um, Let's move on to uh, um, number four. Yes, please do. Um, do we currently rent out the beach, like for events? We do, um, and that's another um, uh, source of revenue that I think could be um, utilized more fully. Uh, I think the, 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 that rental fee is probably the same as it was in 1984 as well. So um, it's probably $20 it, for it, the it's, weekend. It's like $25. <laughs> bucks, yeah, it's, uh, so pay for it with the empty beer cans. We, 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 are, um, uh, we are looking at, at those type of things as Part ongoing of sources of revenue. Yeah, yeah. Um, the and that, that might fold in with some capital down mm -hmm. the road if you mm -hmm. had some supporting structure there that allowed uh, better uh, opportunity absolutely. for those kinds of rentals. Yep, absolutely. Um, so I will start on roads. Um, okay. Um, uh, for the FY21 um, uh, budget, we have $150,000 for paving for Plains Road uh, and some for reserve. Uh, I don't believe <coughs> that we would be using the full 150, but we do put that in every year so that um, we can maintain our uh, paving cycle. We have every road in town that's uh, paved and unpaved on a maintenance schedule. Uh, and uh, with anywhere between 12 and 20 years for the uh, replacement uh, or the resurfacing with a one-inch overlay of asphalt um, in the case of paved roads. Um, and so that level of expenditure um, will need adjustment every couple of years due, due to inflation and things like that. But um, I think we're in a very good spot with our road paving program. Uh, and Plains was recommended for, um, uh, for paving this year by the road committee. I will add that uh, Church Road is probably in about the same condition, if not a little bit worse, in places. Uh, however, we are trying to wait on that for a year or so until we know about uh, whether or not we will be getting a um, uh, sidewalk grant uh, that we can uh, then utilize uh, and do those things in conjunction. Uh, unfortunately, this year, uh, in uh, January, we did find out that we did not get it this year. Um, We've been in the in the pool for several years, but nobody got it. Uh, there's no more. Uh, there was no additional funding coming in, uh, and so um, we're in a good spot if and when more federal funding comes our way. Um, Torsi Pond bridge repairs. I have a, a number here of seventy-three thousand five hundred. That actually represents um, the uh, cost that we have from our uh, preferred contractor plus a twenty percent contingency. Um, uh, this is something that we had been putting away for five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a year over the past two or three years, uh, but again, the cost of this work uh, is is coming in greater than what we anticipated. Uh, but fortunately, we have a road reserve that we can use uh, to help cover that cost. Uh, reserve savings for the salt sand shed, uh, fifty thousand uh, dollars. This is uh, similar to what we had put in uh, last year uh, for this. Uh, we did put this out to bid as well, and that was another project that came in uh, about twice what the engineers had estimated. Uh, and so this one has a lot of uncertainty around it. Uh, I think we, um, we will likely go forward with a bid that includes a repair or replace option. Uh, I think repairs likely would run in the uh, $100,000 range. Replacement would likely be um, in the $500,000 range. So. We would definitely be looking at, at bonding uh, that, perhaps in either case, um, but uh, that's one we have to try again on because of the results of that, of that initial bid process. Uh, we do have several um, uh, sample documents uh, and designs from other municipalities that have recently done this. Um, a lot of municipalities at the same time built uh, storage structures when DEP uh, began pushing that mandate. 
and they're all coming to do at about the same time, so we have other examples to readily available to work with for that. Um, that one, like I said, is, um, uh, I'm hoping to pursue that in, the, in FY22, uh, but uh, the savings uh, should be happening uh, to help reduce the, the burden. Either we could pay for the repairs outright or it would reduce the actual amount of borrowing we have to do for uh, any, any bond. Church Road Sidewalk, Design and Engineering, again, this is one where we um, have made some progress. We're in a good position, but uh, I do want to be in the best position possible if federal, coming, uh, federal funding does come through. Uh, and having some design work done up front uh, to at least perhaps determine which side of the road would be most cost effective, perhaps hold a couple of community meetings. Um, it could also be a step forward if uh, it turns out that in a couple of years we, just, we realize that there is no money coming and we decide we want to do this project ourselves. It could give us some um, uh, initial momentum to, to do that if, if necessary. Uh, but at the very least, it will help with grant funding. Um, LED streetlights, this is very exciting. Uh, we're looking at $20,000 to convert all of our uh, streetlights to LED and purchase the, um, the physical um, asset uh, from CMP uh, to, um, uh, I think the payback we were looking at was four to five years. Uh, so uh, with a, a light bulb that has a 20 year lifespan uh, approximately. So um, uh, I think a wise investment and a, a direction that many other local uh, municipalities are heading uh, and that, um, that would, uh, have some upfront cost. Included with this number is the uh, option of adding three, three to five additional street lights. I've already had two specific requests uh, for street lights. Um, the last time this happened, the select board was given the discretion to um, install, I think it was three street lights, wherever they thought it was most appropriate. So uh, I think that that type of um, um, Go disc crazy. discretion. Uh, with 80 <laughs> requests, we'll pick three. Seems, <laughs> seems, seems appropriate. I see so, a lottery with um, dollars attached. Uh, <laughs> again, the five year horizon, we have the salt sand shed showing up uh, between 100 and $500,000. Uh, and that's going to take some work in the next year to determine exactly how and what that's going to look like. Um, we thought we had a good plan uh, and it got uh, turned on its, uh, its head a little bit. Um, and then the salt sh uh, sand shed asphalt repaving. Um, if we put the new, a new building back in the same location or if we um, uh, repair the building and continue to use it, we will need to do some uh, work on that apron that exists in front of the building. Uh, and I think the 10,000 seems appropriate. Outside of that, uh, we do have some uh, unknown um, expenses, uh, roughly $125,000 to remove and safely block uh, the uh, Mill Stream Bridge um, or uh, uh, Giles, Giles Road Bridge. Uh, the cost to actually rebuild that and reopen it would be um, <laughs> much, much more than that. So I can't in good conscience even recommend that as an option. And um, the residents don't really want it. Okay? They don't want it. They don't want it. The folks on Thundercastle, they really want it, but they can drive an extra quarter mile and be okay, I think. And the um, fire department was fine with it staying closed. Th that's true, And yes. that was our biggest concern yeah. operationally. Emergency yeah. management. Does, does, that in, uh, just, does that include a, a pedestrian replacement, that bridge? I think that it could. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the demolition of that bridge w would be costly. I, I think that... Um, because I still, I don't yeah. think we need to get into a big discussion yeah. on it. I, walkability is still, a, I think, an important issue. Yeah. It yes. is key, and the, 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 the bridge that's down um, over Mill Stream uh, that mm. is there now uh, was from a, a piece of, I think, one or two pieces of I-beam steel that were <coughs> 25 feet long that were just set in place, and they cleated them together with, with pressure-treated wood, yeah. and it's a great solution. We could do something, I think, just like that, probably for $10,000. Um, um, oh, uh, it was cheaper than that because it was all volunteer labor. Yeah. Just the materials. Yeah. I'll lift one of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us may be too old to do it by the time yeah. it comes around. Yeah. Um, I get challenged. At the end of this, you have a slide where we're going to talk about overall. So we can talk about bonding and timing on some of these unknown things mm -hmm. rather than do it now. Yes. Okay. Um, yep. Thank you. Uh, any other questions on roads and infrastructure? Does that look like a good direction? Yeah, just a couple of quick things. If, um, 
We had 25K bonded for the sidewalk. I mean, excuse me, the, the parking lot in front of the Masonic Hall for this year. Yes. Are we just going to encumber that and roll it into the next year? Uh, we, we don't encumber, um, but we um, we could. Um, so we, I've, got a, I've got a meeting scheduled for April 1st with mm -hmm. uh, DOT to go over that. Um, there's a chance we could pull something together, but I think that the most likely solution or result is going to be that that will carry over. It'll stay in the carry forward fund, and we'll have to use it okay. in a future year. All right. Yeah. So it's not going to go away just because we didn't spend it. We have to. Yeah. Yeah. This one I like. Yeah. This one I like. Because uh, it's, okay. it's a pending project, so now it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? I'm talking out of both sides. Yeah. 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 Anything um, else? Um, just um, the, record, the, LED, like the LED conversion stuff. Yes. Uh, we're going <laughs> to own these things. Have we projected what the cost for maintenance will be? Yes, um, uh, uh, minimal, um, and we do have a number of companies that we could uh, work with. One of the things that um, is being done regionally is uh, we could we have several towns, Gardner, um, um, uh, Randolph, uh, uh, I think Bethel might be doing it, uh, not Bethel, um, Belgrade, yeah, a, bunch um, a bunch of them. So uh, this is a low demand service, so they're looking at doing a regional contract. Okay. Um, with a service provider, uh, so we have um, a small inventory of bulbs, uh, and we have someone we can call, and they can. Can we stockpile the bulbs and buy a bulk, or would we not even bother to do that? I'm, the, I'm not sure we would even bother doing okay. that because yeah. yeah. we don't have enough to, to bother to do it. We don't. We have about 40 street lights. Uh, so it would just be an operating line item based on experience for year to year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Min minimal. Um, okay. Minimal expense. And the lifespan and replacement date needs to be changed on those because you said 20 years, so it needs to be 2041. Oh, what did I put? You put 2021 to 2021. Oh, yeah, I think I just. I'll be yeah. here to remind you. Yeah, thanks, yeah. I'm that just. details person. <laughs> you are, and I appreciate it. You're the justify it on the details. Scary. <laughs> just um, timing on LEDs. Transfer station? All right. Uh, we have an MSW trash compactor that is uh, actually probably about a year and a half beyond its useful life. We've uh, patched it together and kept it going. Uh, that's going to be about $40,000 to replace. Um, we um, uh, also have the uh, uh, backhoe lease uh, that normally um, uh, we would include with capital leases, but the, the transfer station being a special uh, uh, entity that we share with two other municipalities, uh, the cost of, uh, we do have to keep all of this separate, and so we have a, a separate capital lease item uh, line for the transfer station. Uh, that's a, we did get a five-year lease. We made the first year payment uh, this year, uh, so this is actually year two of, of, um, um, uh, of the lease. So we'll have a, a quick turnaround on getting that paid for. Uh, with the five-year horizon, we have um, the, the likelihood of repaving the access road loop. The uh, building roof will need to be uh, reshingled uh, for the um, the small building um, that uh, houses the uh, swap shop and the um, uh, uh, restroom. Uh, we need uh, likely to uh, purchase a number of open top roll off containers, uh, and those um, we own four, and those are um, I think they're about five or six thousand dollars a piece. And uh, the compactor roof construction is something that we. Uh, want to do uh, and uh, we will probably discuss uh, sooner rather than later uh, and, I, and I do want to point out that um, with this year's um, and next year's uh, budget for the transfer station we are drawing the reserve down to very very lean levels uh, and I think that either um, uh, a lease agreement or perhaps even bonding uh, might be appropriate uh, uh, next fiscal year uh, I think a, a lease this year might even be a, in order to stabilize that account and give a little bit more balance uh, for us to work with. Um, so we can talk about more on that at the end of the meeting. A lease um, of what? Meeting. Um, or, um, uh, the, um, uh, uh, the compactor, we could potentially um, uh, uh, work with Androscoggin Bank on an uh, okay. equipment lease for that. Um, 
think we have anything else. Would uh, so the compactor roof include covering the demo? Uh, it could. Okay. It could. Because that's been on the topic of consideration for a decade plus. It, it has, and uh, one of the things that we're actually having a good positive um, uh, discussion with staff about uh, the fact that the, the height of that um, and the cost of that could be drastically reduced if we were to limit compactor trucks coming into the facility uh, and send them directly to um, Norgewalk uh, rather than having them come and drop off at the station. Uh, we could still meet their residents' needs very well uh, and um, we only have one commercial hauler that actually uses maybe uh, infrequently a second uh, a compactor truck. So the idea of having to do a 20-foot roof <laughs> as opposed to perhaps a 10-foot roof, uh, the engineering around that is, is very different and the cost is very different. Uh, so I guess what I'm saying is we're having some positive discussions about the functional operation of the facility uh, and how it impacts the capital needs that we have. And I had a question about the scale installation because we have decided we weren't doing the scales, but we had budgeted for it, I don't know, maybe six years ago. Yeah. And I think maybe it's time to take it off. I agree with I, that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 Um, and then residents will know that that money was spent on other improvements because the scale wasn't deemed to be... We did all the due diligence on it and determined it wasn't not to do it, so right. this is just sitting yeah. around there. We don't exactly. have enough volume to, to justify Well, and the there's a lot of maintenance, and it needs a redesign at the whole station to use yeah. a scale. And yeah. we're not, we, that's beyond and, and our ability. Beyond the payback doing. versus what, how we're operating doesn't make sense. And we have a much better system going right now um, of the transfer stations operating really well in the last six months. So, yeah, we talked about the scales when we were losing money sending them. Right. For what we were taking in, what we were spending to take it out, when we're not doing that. Yeah. And, and operationally, it would be, I mean, people complain now about having to slow down and talk to somebody at the, at the gatehouse. Uh, imagine having to go around twice uh, to, to, to pay somebody at <laughs> wedding and pay. Um, that could have been a happy imagine. place. Uh, so, um, anything on transfer station additional? Uh, has the budget committee considered? Uh, renting the cans versus buying new ones outright? I don't believe you've discussed no. that. No. Um, okay. I will say that um, in our operating yeah, budget, we do have today. can rental for the octagons. We actually do own our two, uh, two recycling yeah, compactor yeah. backs, yeah. Uh, but the haulers do so much damage to them uh, right. that they, uh, and the what cost they of repair. Up beyond recognition. Yeah, but the cost of repair is, is astronomical because it's a very heavy, very awkward piece of machinery or equipment. Um, so yeah, we, we've, um, I've basically walked away from owning those cans, the large ones. The little ones, I think we may still have value, particularly if we stop but the 40 yards, smashing them. We don't want to own them anymore. We don't want to own the 40 yard roll offs anymore, the octagons. Um, but now practice has changed. We won't be banging the cans with the new backhoe. Yeah, so I think the, the roll-offs still make the, the roll-offs still make sense. I think um, they were more fa they were more um, the return. We can keep a twenty-year life on those, and it makes sense. Okay. Um, the the octagons, no way. Those things are done in ten years, eight to ten years. Um, so, yeah. Right, just a quick question. Uh, yeah. In Wayne and uh, Fayette, do they budget in detail for the? Um, transfer station operation, or do they just budget their contribution? The latter. The latter? Yeah, they budget just their contribution. And they we only decide. get charged what we actually spend. So if we budget that it's going to cost them $100,000, but it only costs us ninety two for their share, mm -hmm. they're only paying the ninety two over the course of the year. So we're not collecting extra and giving it back. Absolutely right, yeah. Perhaps and, that, and they that are, final payment is an adjustment in the last quarter, correct? Uh, Eric, Eric and Teresa do it ongoing. Yeah. Teresa just bills them for what the actuals are, um, right? Okay. And then the, and we, we subtract the revenue, and that's how it that's how it rolls, right? Yeah. And Fayette and Wayne are very happy with the agreement that we've well, made with them and the use. The and the residents are very, ha especially of Fayette, mm -hmm. very happy. Yeah. Um, and we do a, a detailed calculation for them, so they have an estimate of what their, um, usually a very reliable estimate of what their costs are going to be. Question, Marty. Thanks. They know all the details, though. Yeah, I know there's a. There's a committee with the three town managers mm -hmm. and select board members from each town. Mm -hmm. 
All right, um, so moving on to fire department. Um, the, the fire station um, expansion will be completed. We had, like I said, we had a great pre-construction meeting um, uh, uh, last week or the week before, Ralph. I don't, um, it's all blurry. Right, it's all, yeah. yeah blah, blah, blah. Um, but they've got a very <laughs> aggressive schedule. They want to start earthwork um, this month. Um, and by the looks of it, my garden's half exposed. My, 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 my herbs are growing, uh, practically. Um, it's a... Uh, um, I think a good year to get an early start. The mud um, ruts are hard, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so uh, they're, they're expecting that they'll have the project completed by um, uh, September, October of, uh, of this year, which is, which is great. Um, it's a fast track deal. I, I, I always question that. I said I really want to have it completed by December, um, and we'll set that as the contract uh, completion date. Uh, but um, that, this one will span this fiscal year and the FY21. Uh, and again, we did add appropriate $75,000 additional um, uh, for contingency uh, and project alternatives. Um, and, and this, you had your kickoff meeting last week, you said? Is that what you did? Pre-construction, yes, mm -hmm. yep. yep so the, uh, I, I have heard that supply delivery, access to supplies for construction is slowing down. Um, already. Oh, I'm sure it will. With the, already. Yeah, with the Before seven. the real busy season even hits. This is due to the coronavirus yeah, stuff. Right. So, um, Are we making those trusses in China? Yeah, uh, a lot something of to be this aware stuff of. Comes from China. We send our yeah. raw materials to China. They make it, bring it back. Um, and it's cheaper. Well, I just yes. it could ridiculous. No, it could expand that absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the fortunate thing is that SJ Wood is actually out of Winthrop, um, and their proprietor lives uh, actually has a house in Reedfield. So did not know that prior to the bid. I'll, I'll say that up front. Um, but uh, I knew that they were out of Winthrop. I didn't know he had a house here. But um, in any event, um, I, I think we've got a good contractor. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we've discussed the whole idea of the contingency and um, project alternatives needing to be completed. This the seventy-five thousand, the same as uh, with the library. Um, in order to complete um, that work. Um, Five-year horizon, engine 61 replacement, $400,000. Uh, I've been talking with Lee about how to maybe push that off some. Um, and that's going to be a difficult discussion, I think, all around um, about how often and how... Um, I thought he had already pushed it off. I thought last year... Yeah, he kind of changed his mind on me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, we've had a couple of discussions on it, and it, it is, it's pressure. a little bit, um, it's about three years off right now. Um, but uh, he is actually working with a, a town um, out of state that is looking to donate, perhaps, a, um, a, a, a used uh, piece of equipment that could fill that <coughs> slot uh, for us. So there's a chance we could have a, a significantly reduced... Um, cost there or no cost but a shorter horizon instead of replacing it in 30 years we might replace it in 15 or something like mm -hmm. that so. so so on this the last sheet the bonding yes. draft yep. I mean you're showing this bond and this is for the truck the truck yeah starting hitting uh, in 22 is that because we have to order it in 22 uh, yeah, we would have to order it in 22. Okay. It takes about a year to deliver. You um, order the cabin chassis and then you outfit it. Right. We're, well, we want it in 24. So, do we really order it in 22? That's a, that was yeah, a question I had when I looked well, at it. Well, it took longer than a year last time. Oh, it takes, can take a couple yeah. of years. They said a year, but it was longer. <laughs> it's always. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, always, yeah. And well, also, there's the same that. issue with the septic in this. <laughs> yes. Um, 61 uh, time frame and septic so if we were to buy a used truck from a wealthier community how old would it be and what would that do to the cost i think it, dep it really depends uh, right now uh, ralph's uh, uh not ralph that was the chief lee. One, should be lee don't tell him i said that um no, <laughs> lee would, <laughs> would not like you <laughs> no uh, uh Lee um, uh, was suggesting that there's a, a chance that it, it could be free um, and it would be um, potentially just a few years old um, because of... Uh, Greenwich, uh, Connecticut having a fire sale, no pun intended. <laughs> um, so, but it, that, that's a, um, a, only a possibility and I wouldn't put money on it um, uh, at this point. But yeah, it, just like anything else, do, donated equipment, um, we can find a place for it in Reedfield, I think, if it's appropriately... Outfitted. Inspected and outfitted and all that, yeah. 
Um, and then we have just general equipment reserve of, of $10,000. Uh, because we combined um, the um, fire department physicals, uh, water holes, tower sites, I think that was in there. Um, yes, it was. Uh, and the equipment reserve uh, for um, like SCBA and things like that, as well as the truck repair reserve. Uh, we do need to continue to put money into this account to make sure that we have funds for things like SCBA or unplanned uh, uh, large maintenance on a truck uh, that could, a pump could be $40,000. So um, that reserve is, is, is ongoing and um, I think that level of $10,000 uh, is probably fair. We might want to look at upping that um, in the future, but right now I think with the expenses on the building itself, we're, we're better off leaving it a little bit lower. So what is the cumulative number as the reserve stands now? Um, we have that, or we will have that. Let me look on this page here. At the end of FY21, we are looking at a fire department cumulative reserve uh, of 61500 roughly. That's comfortable. So I just want to clarify that I spoke earlier about the two projects. Uh, the building projects being a total of 75 in this coming budget um, to address those contingency issues because of the tightness of the, of the bids and everything. It's actually, it's not 75, it's 100. It's 75 for the fire department and 25 for the library. Is that correct? Th that is, I guess, uh, but one of the things I'm showing, um, because we had the alternates that were added to the project at the end, mm -hmm. Um, those did add some additional costs. So beyond the contingency, so yeah, you, you're, you're right to say that it is $100,000, um, including the reserve and the, and the alternate. additional alternate components that were needed for the fire station. Yes. And it's, I mean, our explanation to the public is that things cost more than we had hoped they would because of the economy, but it was much less than a year ago when we first put it out to bid and it was almost double. Now we got it very close to what we wanted. But by the same token, we had engineers here telling us, and I exactly. remember asking them how oh, yeah. sure they were. <laughs> oh, we're sure, we do this all the time. They, and, P, and we had an. We, we, we had, have we've had many we, discussions about that. Well, yeah. and there were people here listening to that. <laughs> Eric yeah. has to be it diplomatic. Was, I don't. It was very distressing to me because I was. But no one had expected that to happen, and they were quite, you know, vociferous in their argument. I know we're disappointed with that firm, et cetera, et cetera. But to me, there's a there's a problem in selling it to the taxpayers, um, you know, and getting them to believe that we have a, you know, a sound basis on which we're planning these projects. And then it's like, I, I mean, think you can't plan for something we like We did have a sound now. basis, I would say. It just didn't. Well, we had bad numbers. We started. Well, we didn't know the economy was going to be as good as it was, that we would have such high employment. And so, Builders statewide, no project is coming in at what they thought it would be they because they can't off. hire enough workers. They were it, way off. It's a universal problem uh, from the okay, state on. They were down. way off, though. <laughs> but yes, they were. I'm willing to vote and for that. And move I on. I think that more, <laughs> right, more right. than more it than the impact of the read economy. Field. Let's put it that I, way. The bottom line, I think, is that Ellen's. Um, we need to recognize we need to explain as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think budget differently in the future for other large scale projects. Yeah. And I think it is a, uh, one thing that I'm actually looking forward to with establishing this municipal building reserve is that we can then perhaps put contingency funds into that reserve for large projects uh, and, and you know, have that available to, to cover some of this stuff if it comes up um, as bad as it did this time. So. Maintenance? Yes. Uh, we have capital equipment leases of 16150 That is, uh, I think, the fourth or the fifth payment for the um, um, Bobcat uh, sidewalk machine, which I absolutely love. That thing is awesome. Uh, it does great work. It, it gets used to the transportation. You should let some taxpayers drive that thing around. It's no way. Look at that no way. Pony. I want I to I wanna do some sidewalk. <laughs> Union we want it to me. last a long time. Yeah, uh, I'm a skilled operator. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a great piece of equipment. We're getting a 
every, worth every penny, I'll say. Um, we are also putting in $15,000 into an equipment reserve. Uh, this is a general equipment reserve for uh, things like the truck, um, any um, large um, expenses for plows, or you can see some of the things coming up in the five-year horizon. Um, I think that this $15,000 uh, plug this year will actually bring us up to a level where I won't be recommending um, anything more than a um, sustenance level um, replenishment of that reserve uh, as we move forward because we've gotten to the point where we could more or less replace a large piece of equipment in our inventory without um, having to um, uh, have a, um, a major tax impact. Um, on the five-year horizon, we have the John Deere uh, zero-turn mower, around 15000 for that, GMC pickup. Um, we buy those at, at auction or uh, through dealerships uh, for, for just a little bit of money, and we get really good use out of them. Um, the one we have now is actually um, in extraordinary condition. I think we only paid about six or $7,000 for it. So, um, but they only have an estimated lifespan of about five or six years before we start looking at re uh, repair costs getting to be higher. Um, so we do have that in the plan. Uh, and again, the, the plow and sander, um, those things get uh, beat up, they get a lot of salt on them, and they have a, a fairly short five to ten year life um, outside of regular maintenance. Uh, and then unknowns, uh, we really don't have much. Uh, we've got a pretty good handle on what we have in inventory and what the replacement schedules are. Great. Uh, budget summary. Uh, right now we have about $537,000 in total ex capital expenditures and reserve appropriations and I did want to make sure that I made that distinction uh, that some of these um, funds that we've talked about are planned on being expended immediately. Some um, we're putting away for future years to perhaps um, uh, offset, a, 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 to smooth out the budget um, or uh, you know, pay for any um, other, I'll stop with that. Um, offsetting revenue, uh, we do have $194,700 in use of designated funds. Every year we look at that and try to pull what we can uh, responsibly to um, uh, offset uh, some of these capital costs. Oftentimes we've been putting away for two or three years or more. Um, in the cases of like the cemetery where we put away $5,000 every year, um, we might be 10 years down the road where we pull out $50,000 to pay for a project. So. Um, we do use those designated funds and actively uh, use them. Uh, we also have $25,000 in donations coming in, in addition to what we had originally projected for the project, so I wanted to make sure we accounted for that. Uh, we also have use of undesignated funds. Um, I don't know the exact number on that because uh, we have, I think, uh, maybe 150 right now. I'd have to look at the, the, um, the actual budget um, spreadsheet, but whatever that number is, in theory, it could be spread over the entire budget for every department, um, uh, and it wouldn't be right to accrue it just to the capital reserves, even though the numbers sometimes match up uh, well. But uh, we do use some of the designated fund to offset the cost of these expenses, and of course, uh, tax dollars make up the difference. And um, this year, we don't have any bonding or um, uh, leasing projected currently, like I said, I do want to talk about uh, more the transfer station and if that's appropriate uh, to look at um, for that expense. Uh, and that's what I had for uh, my general presentation on uh, capital expenditures, and I'll leave it to you folks where you want to head with, where, with the discussion from here. Were you going to go over this um, chart? That's a great place to start. This is a really good chart. Yeah, so, um, uh, so we're the, looking last, at bonding. the last page in the um, packet, and I'm going to try to pull it up here on the um, And on can the I ask computer. a clarifying question sure. that relates to that? For me, it's at the beginning. So when we're listing things in the five-year plan, we're putting the total cost in for a year, not the amount that we're actually going to spend in a year, because you're putting the amount you're spending each year on this sheet. This is. I, I'd have to. I have to think about that one. I'm not sure. I. Um, okay. Um, for instance, we have the fire truck in 2024 is 400 thousand, which yes. spikes our capital spending to 616. Yep. And I'm not comfortable with a CIP that has this up and down. Oh yeah. So, I would rather yeah. see uh -huh. the the 40 thousand for 10 years put into this this plan as well so, as 
this Well, that's chart. where it shows up in the budget. Is yeah, so, service. yeah, I, I go and, back and right. forth on that. So, and yeah. so that's why I'm asking, because I want the opinion from you folks also, because I know mm -hmm. you do very large budgeting projects, and what, what is the appropriate thing? Well, this is showing, the five-year plan shows you when you're going to write the check, right? So yep. Whether you, know you borrowed or not. Regardless of how you fund it. Right. So you know that in four years or whenever, in three years, we need a fire truck. Okay. Um, and so we plan for that. And when you are looking at the budget, you realize, and you guys say, don't raise the tax, the mill rate, that you have to have that in mind that we're going to have this giant expenditure. Um, yeah coming up in four years and so you have to sort of figure out how to bat Erica it, Teresa. It's kind of like the, it's the, kind of like the audit. Up. You have to look at so, different things in different ways. Yeah. 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 But this shows you the, the, the burden of the debt um, over over time. Over time. Yeah, I, I basically did a 12 year um, showing the past year, the, per, or the current fiscal year, the, per, the, the coming fiscal year, and then 10 years beyond that. Again, this, this doesn't show the fact that we might bond that fire truck, um, or I guess it does show the, the one fire truck in 2022 because we know that's going to get, if it gets purchased, it will be bonded. Um, but anything that's really outside of that five year horizon probably won't show up here um, and shouldn't show up because budgeting beyond five years is, especially for capital, is kind of a crapshoot. It makes cool. no sense. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I guess my question then, is, Ellen hit the nail on the head, is do we show the expense over time in this sheet? I don't think so. Yeah, I wouldn't think so either because I think it, it's, it's confusing and it's awkward to have to split between those two views, the one of what is the actual um, tax impact, the dollar impact um, that affects debt service, um, and things like that, but I think it is important and to, to show just the year of the expense because there's so much going on in that spreadsheet and there are certain categories where we're putting away $5,000 a year into a reserve. I think it could just get a bit more muddled if we're, okay. I'm just looking at it as a, that's the year of the expense, that's what we're spending, and then we have to, as Ellen said, figure out how to accommodate that with the actual um, budget and debt service. So when you explain the, the budget to the public, we have debt in there now and we can explain that this was a you know I don't know however many millions of dollars investment that was made in whatever year it is and our yeah. debt service every year for the next 20 years is three hundred thousand dollars or whatever it might so be this just isn't reflecting your funding mechanisms because That's if the right. general public yeah. looks at this, yeah. maybe it just needs a note that talks about this is not the funding, this is the actual outlay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, outlay is a great Yeah, I mean, we, yeah. We, we owe the money in that year. Yeah, and that's okay. How we okay. choose to finance it is, you know. We could win the lottery. Yeah. Great, <laughs> yeah, um, by I, getting a truck donated. I, I, I will <laughs> say um, that. that I think that. The town <laughs> needs a tax rate on <laughs> We, we could we could modify the debt service um, long term debt schedule to include more projections. I mean, I could I know that in the next ten years we're going to have a few more things coming up that are that are debt uh, funded. Um, I could look at those and say we're going to plan on a three and a half percent interest rate. We're going to plan on each of them being fifteen years, and we could build that out and show what it looks like. Um, it, it would. It wouldn't be real. It wouldn't be real, but it could be something that would. But I kind of like yeah. to look at this and know we have no debt right here. This is a good time to buy something, you know. Yeah. If you put could have, should have, would have been there. Do a tax cut. Uh, yeah, I like to be able to say this <laughs> yeah. is a good time. Yeah. Well, but we talked about, for instance, a sand and salt shed, and that's in there in one year, but it's not in here on the bonding. And that sand and salt shed causes a huge spike in 2022. So it, I think if we're going to put yeah. it in there, we ought to put it in this picture I also. Agree. I yeah. agree with that. So yes. if you're going to be in that five-year window, I'd like to see how we're going to fund it in the same five-year window on the back. Yeah. I did Maybe leave that one. better? I did leave that off because I don't know whether we're going to replace it or no, no, but just repair yeah, it. Yeah, you're not so even sure what we're doing. I'm not even sure right. what we're doing with it yet. We don't have border approval yeah. for these projections. They're projections <laughs> exactly. at this point. Exactly. I understand. Yeah. 
And it's going I just to want scare our projections the heck to out of people to see some of these spikes yeah. I mean, when I, they haven't had a chance to bless it yet. Well, you know, it might be better to leave the fire truck off of this because this is our actual debt. Yeah, this is your actual your graph is actual. Yeah. yeah, then take and all the so, projected stuff out of there. Good. You know, you can. I've made this point before. Debt is nothing to be afraid of. That is page. good. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you can Give see where it drops mm -hmm. down in 2022. There's plenty of yeah. room yeah. to take on debt yeah. to finance right. important capital projects like a fire truck and a and or a salt and sand shed. Yeah. Or as Marty yeah. said, the windows even. Yeah. Mm. Whatever it might well, be. Think, yeah. So yeah. look at both options. And we could have two sheets. You could have the one that you're saying, this is the actual debt that we have. Right. And you could have a second sheet that is your projections. So right. for planning purposes, for yeah. what we're all looking at going out, you can see that, okay, we can't really buy that in that year because we have too much debt then. We have to wait a year. Or we can get it earlier than we thought. I think that that's a very good point. Uh, in terms of explaining debt service, um, to our residents, I think we have to be careful when we say that we have room to incur more debt <laughs> because we don't want people to get the impression that we're just waiting for yeah, chances to just spend waiting their to money. sign a check. <laughs> yeah, I think I but think we have I, need exactly, and we can bear it in the debt. Right, I think it's a matter of yes, the way, the the way you explain it. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have you do that, Marty. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't have me do it. Town has needs. We have to schedule like those that. needs so that they don't yeah. overwhelm the taxpayer. And what this does is it and allows us. That. It allows us to try to calculate yeah. the capacity uh, for that kind right. of bonding and, and and kind of service debt service responsibly. Responsibly. And, it and out this is what the school district has not done. <laughs> I was go. waiting for that. At there least, it is. At least this time. At least this time. 807. <laughs> Next Wednesday evening. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. It's the joint, it's the four school board select board, select board, school board joint meeting. It's a fun show. <laughs> I think, and you know, <laughs> one thing. We're all very kind and polite. It's not a nasty meeting, I don't think. I don't know, this will be this my, first, be my one. first one. Oh, well, well it, it has not been in the past. I mean, we say things that we probably don't, other people don't want to hear, but I think that goes yeah. both directions. But, it, but it's very I'm nice. I'm very supportive of everything that school does. Just, they made a mistake, I think, with that particular bond. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that was a lot of heads good. bobbing up and down. <laughs> okay. I feel really comfortable with what we've done tonight. Thank you for letting me spout as much as You guys as I have did. done a great job. Thank you. Yeah. It's decent. Well, we and, a, yeah. Professional help. Yeah. Most yeah. Of the <laughs> and Teresa as well. It comes from the grassroots. I waved in that direction too. It may not have been out here. <laughs> <laughs> so, can we assume that you folks are kind of winding down on your meeting schedule now? Have you pretty much? We have um, just a few more reviews um, for a um, uh, for the complete um, complete draft, uh, but yeah, uh, the select board is actually looking at the first um, uh, the first um, complete um, final budget and warrant draft. Or it's not a final. It's we've been in development. We're going to continue to be in development for another month. Uh, but uh, we're starting to get to the point where we're nailing things down and setting a rigid structure as much as possible on whatever we can. So that, um, that's going to be happening both with the, the select board and the budget committee. Um, and I probably should have uh, brought a copy of that schedule with me. But um, um, yeah, it, it's going to be wrapping down in the next, uh, the next, basically by the end of this month, we will be done. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> so is everybody all set? We're in work workshop mode, so we're out of session.